But oh, I yeah. am winning this point. Open audacity. Well, let me well, start recording that. Yeah. The audacity of you people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good day, sir. How dare you? <laughs> I said good day. <laughs> Get your hand off my penis! That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the penis. Oh, no. <laughs> Not my penis. penis. <laughs> Not my penis. I'm gonna skip commercials. Oh, tonight. right as we're live on air, we start talking about penises. <laughs> right, it doesn't uh, take you long, Phil. Come on. Oh. Isn't that always the way? Right. Yeah, I'm always caught with my pants down. <laughs> For those who don't know, this is what I look like. <laughs> Since I usually hide, I'm like, oh. For those of you playing at home, Carrie <laughs> is actually showing her face tonight. Right? All right, Phil, make sure you record yourself because you see, you feel a little echoey to me. I don't know. Not echoey, but just far away. I don't know. Uh, well, I do. I, 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 yeah, I have my mic off oh, to the side. So just, far uh, away. Ooh, look at you already Does sketching it? out some Wolverine shit. Uh, yeah, I got to have my base drawing down so that I don't have to think. and I could just fucking... Oh. I do too. I don't have enough time to get anything done otherwise, so I started well, I'm cheating. Drawing too, Logan because so. Logan's coming out. <laughs> oh, that's I'm true. Friday, excited. right? Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, it is true. I it all together. I got James watching the Turing thing in the other bedroom, and uh, he's paused it until I'm done. The is that, that that's Grand Touring on um, Netflix? Hmm. That that show on Netflix? Oh no, um, the Imitation Game. Because we have to watch that for broke Bot, So. Oh, the Imitation Game. Mm -hmm. that, does that have uh, Cumber, Cumber Bitch? Yep, Cumber Snatch. Cumber Bitch. Yep. And it also has the pig fucker in it from Black Mirror. I was so excited. Oh, the actual, the prime minister who did it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no like, way. oh pig fucker, there he pig is. Pig fucker is awesome. I didn't even pick that up. Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> when uh, I was doing uh, <laughs> no, Black Mirror. No, I know I hated that guy in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> That would have been great if in Black Mirror they would have been like, I'm not going to fuck a pig. My great-great-grandfather invented the computer. <laughs> <laughs> they tie it all in. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I've got... I got us going live in about eight minutes, nine minutes, roughly. We may or may not have somebody watching us. They're nuts, but it's all I'm going to throw the link out here a couple places. Okay. Uh, there should be like a Facebook one. It's I like preset it so it'll just go out and the Twitter will just go out and you guys will be linked and while we're on you can just kind of retweet if you want. Made it just easier that way. It's Is easier the, the once I... There's a live stream tweet. Is that wait? Did I miss that? Do you see? There's a thing. It says links in the corner, down here. I think oh. that's right. If I'm not doing it backwards, um, down there and it'll say links. If you click that, it should give you the link. If not, I can just give you the link. It's not a big deal. Why don't you just tell me what the link is? <laughs> Why don't you just tell me the movie you want to see? <laughs> Press one. <laughs> movie phone. Remember I forgot about a movie phone guy. That's Re great. Remember when that's how we had to find out what the fuck was playing in the theater? Yeah, I forgot it was. Yeah, I remember oh, that. That's what, the, that's what the head, that whole joke comes from. Uh, Kramer yeah. filling in for the movie I phone. I forgot guy. that that's where like the joke and, comes well, from. Somebody you know called him by accident. Yeah, and then uh, he was uh, George, just like, George, George oh. called him to find out what the movie was, and he couldn't he couldn't tell by the touch tone what the uh, yeah. what he was actually. Oh my see. god, it's he just he just went with it. That was great. <laughs> Why don't you just <laughs> tell me what the movie you want to see is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best. Oh jeez, there's a lot of those jokes. As like more kids start watching that, they're gonna be really confused. Be like, why didn't they just use their uh, the internet? What's why come they don't have a yeah, my, browser? My son won't wild? watch it because because uh, it's too dated. Isn't it's that? Like, oh my god, that is the wild. Yeah. Oh shit, Seinfeld <laughs> is too dated. Get the fuck out of here. It's crazy because it's like uh, I don't know. Like, they don't have any cell phones. Was, uh, technology was fast for us, but it wasn't like as fast as as it is now. Like yeah. I know from the time, of, like my kid was like eight to like ten, there was like you know um, texting, and then all of a sudden, boom, smartphones, and like like the whole world just went. Yeah. Like, even even in the early two thousands, it wasn't 
there wasn't it was still like the late 90s like there was st- like digital cameras weren't completely everywhere professionally it's really right. weird now i, I remember the first digital camera i got and it was crazy expensive man yeah, and it yeah. didn't really do shit. <laughs> yeah okay so what digital program are you using what kind of um thing are you using there imran me i have this is a uh it's a drawing tablet from mm-hmm. ye, ye nova and of uh, the program i'm using is called manga studio okay it's uh primarily it's like especially for comic book art it's like a combination of photoshop and illustrator but it has amazing amazing drawing and painting tools mm-hmm. and uh you know the the key is the stylus has uh, a thousand levels of sensitivity so mm-hmm. you press down hard and it reacts so it's very natural in terms of drawing it's not just like you know i can make a thick and thin line based on the pressure so just like a pencil just like a pencil or a brush in the watercolors it's got pastel it's got oils it's got ink pens uh and then you can make panels real quick and word bubbles and drop in text like it's made specifically to do comic books no oh, that's crazy you, I could also be using Photoshop for the same effect, but I just, I like Manga Studio. Sure. That looks pretty cool. And and Phil, you're using a pencil. <laughs> I'm using a technology <laughs> dates back to <laughs> the creation of fire. <laughs> I still like Seinfeld with no cell phones, and I, uh, I draw with a pen. <laughs> He's using That's technology last seen in uh, the original Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh my God. I know. I don't know how to like, I can't wait until you kind of give me a lesson. Cause I got one of those, uh, uh, what's it called? It starts with a W, uh, wake the Wacom, the Wacom, yeah. the Wacom yeah. sack em. I mean, yeah. I think for you, we don't even start with that. Like you just need to start on pencil and paper because yeah. l- learning the Wacom is almost even for artists. It's a relearning how to draw a lot of times because it's, yeah. I only, I only use mine for coloring. Yeah, mm. uh, because you have to just... you have the drawing tab pad. You have to break where you're looking and where you're drawing, which is very yeah. It's, it it's can be tough, fun, but man. it takes. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like playing guitar and singing. Like I can play guitar. Have something yet where you can just like draw right on the. No, pad. Well, that's what I have. This thing. Oh, you draw oh that's right what you right doing. Yeah. yeah, and Wacom sells a whole monitor that's like three thousand dollars. That's amazing that you draw oh, right awesome. on it. Oh, well, that's maybe I'll just put that in my wedding registry. This thing is only six hundred bucks. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's nice. It's not a Wacom. It's like a Wacom lower consumer, more better. It's just like trying to give competition because up until now, only Wacom was making these things, and they could charge whatever they wanted, and it was really annoying. Yeah, and they were. Yeah, and they were. Yeah, and now this companies like this uh, are trying to bring the price down, and this thing works just as good as a, a fucking three thousand dollars Cintiq. Yeah, well, and also there's a. I think iPad is going to have a lot more shit coming out in the future, too. The, the pencil is great. Yeah, and they have great programs. They have great like drawing Pro- programs. Yeah, Procreate is awesome. And yeah. uh, I've, I've diddled with that a little bit. Not yeah. That's probably the, the best thing about that Microsoft Surface is that you can carry it around. And it's a digital sketchbook, and yeah. uh, it's, it's so powerful, and it's so amazing. It's the well, only it's thing hard I would for switch. like artists, I think at all, yeah. like yeah. having to switch, like you said, where you're like, you're, you're looking, you know, everything's down now and you have to like, you know, draw down here, but you have to look this way because I've been used to, you know, my, my yeah. trained eye, like how Phil is right now. He's looking yeah. down well, at that's, his yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, so he's used to that. But me having to like draw and look straight is weird. So that, that takes pra- it just comes from practice. I yeah. so that's what I use at work. I have a Wacom pad and I don't have a mouse and I use that exclusively at work. So I've trained myself. It just takes lots of practice. Yeah, but the imagine. direct one to one right here, that's the shit right there. That's what yeah, you want. no doubt. Definitely. All right, we got a couple minutes here, but we could probably get this show on the road, kittens. All right. I'm going to mark the this thing, whatever this is, at the 10 minute, 5 minute mark, whatever that this is. And you guys can mute if you want, and I'll get it started. I'm like, oh, maybe. Mute. All right, here we go. And I might have to hiccup for one. <laughs> Oh, this is my life today. Okay, so don't play the Westworld theme. And play this theme. Okay, cool. Got it. In three, two. Okay. 
You are listening to a Blazing Caribou Studios production. fucking guy comes out of nowhere kicks our asses and steals all the coke this would be the guy that looks like batman i didn't say he looked like batman you did trey you said the guy looked like batman i said like a mask and stuff and a cape yeah like batman i didn't say like batman i never said batman batman i never said batman enough Welcome to the most dysfunctional collection of art supplies, alcohol, and smack talking the internet has to offer. This is Sketching Comedy, and I'm your host, Carrie Sims, along with the guys on the drawing boards, Mr. Imran Javid and Mr. Phil Rude. What we do here, guys, is talk about art and artists while we crack jokes, sketch out what we talk about, and see where we end up by the end of the show. Will it be a train wreck of a conversation that results in great sketches? or a great conversation that results in sketches of train wrecks. We soon shall see. Hey, Phil, are you feeling a little kick-ass tonight? As I always do, Carrie. Wait a minute, am I still muted? Oh, nope, you're not. No, yeah, oh my yeah, God, I'm, you no, we can hear you, Phil. I didn't mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. And hey, Imran, are you channeling the power of Daredevil or Wolverine for tonight's performance? I am the man with all the fear. I took all his fears. I love that uh, Batman clip. Where was that from? I have something to add to that, but where was that from, Carrie? That was actually from Kick Ass. Um, oh, that was from Kick Ass. It was from Kick Ass. I was. I will. I will see your that. Batman audio and raise you this audio. Yeah. Hello. There's a man here who thinks he can help you. Batman? No, he's a yes. scientist. Batman's a scientist. It's not Batman. <laughs> Batman is a scientist. <laughs> he is a scientist. Monorail. <laughs> <laughs> Mono dope. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, um, we got a good show for you today. We're going to be talking about John Salvatore Romita. He's professionally known as John Romita Jr., or they call him JR. JR. Um, yeah, JR. JR. He was born in August of 17, 1956. He's an American comic book artist, best known for his extensive work for Marvel Comics from the 70s to the 2010s as well as writing on the kick-ass movie, uh, that's what we're talking about, and the TV series Luke Cage. He's often um, referred to as JRJR and the son of comic book artist John Romita Sr., which we will do another show on one day. Um, he's one of the signature Spider-Man artists since on the 60s, and he studied advertising art and design at Farmington State College in East Farmingdale, New York, graduating in 1976. So... I got a little information on this guy today and kind of was looking through stuff and I, he's like all over the place. You know, I couldn't, I, I don't know if you got my message earlier, but I'm like, is he DC? Is he Marvel? But I think there's a lot of guys like this. I mean, he's just kind of all over the place, right? R Ramita Jr. is very prolific and possibly he has a couple of dubious distinctions. He is uh, next to his father, John Ramita Sr. Uh, he has drawn Spider-Man the longest hmm. out of anybody. Now last, you know, last show we talked about Todd McFarlane who also, Define Spider-Man. John Romita defined Spider-Man for decades, from the 80s to the 90s. You you saw his style change from decade to decade uh, to what it is now, and uh, he's just so prolific. And I believe he's yeah he's drawn DC. He's drawn like every character at some point uh, for everybody. He's like that kind of guy, you know. Right. And same thing with Jim Lee. Jim Lee is a big Marvel guy, but he came over to DC for Rebirth. They've been kind of doing a switch. DC's rebirth. They've been pulling a lot of the guys who like the Marvel, but really, it's a big community. They're all friends. It's all it's it's work. They all want to draw all these characters, you know. Sure. Uh, anyways, so. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like you know, I was just kind of reading about you know his start, and you know, kind of getting. I mean, he started this like at eighteen, and he had the uh, creation of the Prowler. Yeah, and for Spider-Man Spider yeah, in yeah, yeah. Uh, comic one. book number 78. Man, I don't know, Imran, you are getting me to the point where I almost have to, like, start Spider-Man because it's like you're almost giving me, like, 
a little like love for it. I'm like, oh God, now I got to read this. And Listen, kinda- all you got to do is we have a great episode of the Jock and Nerd podcast where I, uh, it's the essential Spider-Man stories you should read. Yeah. Just listen to that episode and it'll point you in a lot to a lot of good stories. Like there goes Imran plugging his other show. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you want to know what Spider Man read? I got. I did a whole show about it. You you have to have an episode like that because there is like sixty years almost to that yes. character. Yes. There's so much and there's so like uh like JRJR kind of brought a lot of the mystical stuff into Spider Man with like Madam Web and all this like magical absolutely fourth dimension kind of stuff it's really weird and really far removed from everything that had come before it there's new characters that crop up in every um in every decade you know like he did the prowler and, and mcfarland did uh he did uh, what carnage and venom like yep, yep. like in the 90s you know what i mean like so yeah something like that i'm gonna go find that episode too because i have uh scattered readings of uh of Spider-Man over all the years, but I don't know, you know, like what are the real essentials? Well, and I'll tell you being a novice and like not even knowing where to pick something up. I mean, something like that would be wonderful for, for me to just say, okay, Carrie, like you got to start with this and then you go to this. So if that's you something like that. I'm that's exactly it. what that show is. And like Spider-Man is one of those titles that I've always tried to keep reading outside of the nineties when they, started cloning him and there were 17 spider-man titles i just I was like i'm out and then i came back in and uh i just it's one of those characters that i'll always be reading ever since forever um phil what do you think about ramita's style and how it's changed what have you noticed about that because early on he drew a lot like his dad which is kind of the marvel house style just a very not generic but your marvel style that you saw in licensed art everywhere yeah, it was like a bulkier kind of Spider-Man. He was, you know, built up a little. Uh, he wasn't like super muscular, but he was he was certainly stockier and broader yeah. shouldered and things. And then I feel like when he came back and drew him for uh, Straczynski in like the early two thousands, he was streamlined again. That um, was the big. He was style almost, yeah. it, it was almost like he he took a cue from McFarlane. And, and really slimmed him down, uh, made him real spindly. Um, and when I noticed him doing that was uh, he did, uh, and this is kind of when I started coming back to comics because I got out of reading comics for a long time. Um, Marvel did a a 9-11 issue. Yes, yes, that was John amazing. Yes, yes. drew that. And yes. it's a really, really powerful uh, book. It's really, it's full of really cool imagery and he did and spider-man was the central character of that yeah there was an uh, um, it was there was a uh, an issue of amazing spider-man too when that happened it just had a black cover and i mean this is one of the things marvel does best they work in real life things whereas dc will give you like gods and like the heroes become heroes just because marvel keeps it grounded and like that whole issue with spider-man going look we have all these powers yet we weren't able to stop this what happened and, yeah and they just they they were there helping the firefighters clear the wreckage and just uh you know thinking about life and how we're superhuman it was really good really poignant really classy well done it's a yeah it's a great issue and you can find it in trades and stuff all over i really recommend uh checking that out but i know part of the reason they did that you talk about how uh marvel's grounded a little more in reality like Joe Q at the time did a did yeah. an interview and he was like, "We have to do something because, you know, we're based in New York. Ninety uh, percent of our characters live in New York. Yep. You know, like well, it is New York. Yeah, it, it's straight up. It's a New York company, and that totally affected uh, uh, comics in general. But you know, because DC was based there for a long time too. But just to have all the all the Marvel heroes and Ramita." killed it on the art on that issue it was it's just amazing well hey, i didn't uh, get yeah. into too much of ramita let's just take a little quick break and get into the news and then we'll get right back on john ramita you guys can tell me all about it because i'm fascinated so right back hey my name is paul and i'm not an animal expert i'm donna and i'm not an animal expert either and together we do a podcast about animals called varmints Every week, we pick an animal, do a bunch of research on it, and bring you some interesting facts about that animal. But we don't stop there. We talk about that animal in movies, TV, and other pop culture. 
and we talk about whether or not the animal would make a tasty dish and how intelligent we think that animal is on a scale of 1 to 10. It's exactly like one of those fancy PBS nature documentaries. Except not at all like that really in any way. We're on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from and we're at blazingcariboustudios.com. All right, there's a football game starting. What happened? <laughs> Touchdown! <laughs> uh, this is the Quick Draw News. And what I found was Kickass is kind of getting set for a new makeover with Mark Miller revealing that Dave Lazuski, or is that how you say his name? The, the main character is it Liz, Lazuski. I'm terrible with names. It's a comic I book character name. name. I can yeah, say yeah. it however it's I want. The actual, yeah, I, yeah, I guess I can say it any way yeah. I want. I'm going to just call him David Lazuski. <laughs> He's the original kick ass. David Luzander. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, set to be replaced by a black female character. Now, this came out a little bit last year that they were discussing this. I'm not sure, and you guys can tell me if this actually happened yet. Um, for the upcoming series, Kick Ass, the new girl, which will see Miller once again collaborating with co creator John Romita Jr. So comics is not short of white males aged around 30. The demographic seems pretty well catered for more uh, pop culture, Miller said. I don't think many blonde white guys around 30 uh, feel under uh, represented when they pick up a comic or watch a movie. Being older or younger or female or African-American just seems more interesting to me as a writer because the character is quite unique and opens up story possibilities that have been tried haven't been tried in almost 80 years of superhero fiction. This woman has completely different has a completely different take on Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass is like, you know, a James Bond or or Doctor Who where a new face a new situation it suddenly feels exciting. Every four volumes or so I want a different person in the mask. So sometimes it might even only last a single volume or a single issue. So I don't know if you guys have followed the Kick Ass series or not. Um, I would say more probably Imran if you have. So do you have you followed this at all? Well, I've uh, I've read the first Kick Ass, and uh, I know there's a sequel, and uh, I enjoyed the book. I kind of it's interesting how he, he's trying to make Kick Ass a mantle, I guess, mm -hmm. which is very superhero y and and get people. And in that world, uh, it would make sense if he's inspiring other people to do the same thing. Um, I haven't read it in a while, but Mark, Mark Miller is a great, everything he does is, can instantly be turned into a movie like that. He's yeah. just really good with his properties and a lot of them already Kingsman, the secret mm -hmm. service. That's, oh, yeah. a Mar that's a Mark Miller story. Gotcha. Comic book. Gotcha. Yeah. So he's really good at writing cinematically and it translates really well. Well, I think over the last, um, you know, I want to say a few years or so, like, you know, as nerd culture has kind of become more the norm i guess you could say yeah, yeah um you know i really like the diversity that is you know being shown in comic and graphic novels and stuff like that where as before i never really felt like i could read it you know where i could ah. just sit down uh -huh. i'd be like well how is this relatable to me but you know my kid kind of points out which is really kind of interesting is like she's really interested in all of the superheroes that have disabilities and i'm like like oh. who and she's like well daredevil's one of my favorite you know yep, he's, yep. he's disabled in a way and she's just like i really like that there's a person out there that i can kind of look up to and i don't feel so powerless you know being disabled myself that i can say okay yeah, i can look up to this guy even though he is you know white and 30 and all that good stuff the fact is is that they're kind of taking a spin on some of these superheroes and things like that, where it really is pulling in a whole new genre of people, which I mean, 10 years ago, I'd have been like, not interested. I love, I know. I agree. I love what they're doing now. And another great example of that is the new uh, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel yeah. is uh, the girl. Miss Marvel is Kamala Khan. She is a pa American born Pakistani Muslim immigrant who is Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, and I keep going. If I was a girl, I'm like, that's me. I'd be Miss Marvel. <laughs> I am Miss Marvel. She, you know, she pretty much. And like to see that was super refreshing. I was like, wow. And the 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 writer is a uh, converted Muslim. Like she's hung out with Pakistani families. She puts uh, Pakistani words in there. She's nailed the home life of what it's like. It's really well done. I couldn't. Wow. I highly recommend Miss Marvel if you're looking for that kind of stuff. Diversity. 
Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it, I, I don't know. I mean, I always feel like comics are a really good place for that because it's like you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can have Beast Boy, who's like this hairy kid, you know, yeah. uh, represent like, you know, I don't know, werewolves. He can be whatever. Know. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is the legacy characters were created by white Jewish men in the 40s, 50s and 60s, and they created what they knew which was white dudes, uh, you right. know, across the board. You even see this in the MCU, like all mm -hmm. the main movies, all the main guys are white guys. Now, very quickly, once Black Panther comes out, that they're going to change all that because that is an amazing, like, diverse cast. And Spider-Man, too. And I'm just spitballing here because I'm just thinking, like, for future shows and stuff like that. But, you know, how many female graphic artists are there out there, you know, working for marvel and all of that, that there's a lot know, of good ones and writers too yeah, yeah. a lot of good writers like also. we're gonna have to tap into that because i would yeah. love to see the difference you know absolutely style you know is it feminine is it masculine is it you know um does it kind of fit right in you know those i think you'll be surprised because yeah. many times you can't tell it's drawn really? by a man or a woman yeah like a good see, artist is like a good the good artist, a good artist, a good artist. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah, I do like that. I don't like, you know, looking at art and saying like, oh, a man drew this or a woman drew this or, you know, I mean, I just like the fact that art is art. And I've always felt that, you know, it shouldn't have um, a gender yeah. or anything else behind it. It should just, you know, it should just, you know, just be so, it, you know, I'd be the, work, the work stands on it. I mean, you look at uh, Fiona Staples or uh, Becky Cloonan. Yeah, um, Becky Cloonan's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. Becky Cloonan's amazing. Uh, uh, does, Sarah you know, Pacelli, who's drawing um, the Sp Ultimate Spider-Man, is she's amazing too. Okay, uh, and uh, Betty Brightweiser is a colorist, mm -hmm. uh, and her style is—I mean, she, it looks—it's so painted, it's so beautiful. Like it, the work stands on its own. I've never seen anyone pick up a comic and go, "Oh, this is drawn by a girl." Yeah, fuck <laughs> this. You yeah. know, and it, it's just. <laughs> Like the work is the work and it's either good or it's bad. And I think, I think that it is sort of just like art is sort of the great level leveling field for that. You know what I mean? Like you can, that's where it just, it's either good or not. It doesn't matter who drew it. It doesn't matter color, race, whatever. I mean, I'm sure it matters to some people, but uh, to people who just appreciate the art and, and the story and that's what they're there for. They don't care. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the opposite of that, though, there is something to be had from different experiences and different things you can pull oh, totally. into your art. You know, say you are you're surrounded by one race of people your whole life. You know how to draw them really well. You know, right. it just comes to you because you've seen it and, and you could draw it a little more realistically than than uh, uh, somebody else. So but oh, yeah. I still think the art is the art like it, you shouldn't be able to tell. Obviously. Right. I agree. So that's what's going on right now. So we'll check back with him and see like uh, what's going on with that kickass series. You know, I love the kickass. Yeah, kind of like you know. And I know Phil, you were talking about like uh, the movie itself was. Did you think it was shit? Yeah, I, I'm not a I'm not a kickass fan, and not to disagree with everything Imran's saying, I'm not a Mark Millar fan. I oh, really? um, I think he probably writes really good movies i think yeah. he writes terrible comics I, I i just think everything is extreme i uh i kind of uh i like to write him up as like the michael bay of comics it's no like, i was gonna say that i i could see that every, I, uh, I agree yeah. he's almost every, right it's too hard he's trying to make these things into movies like you could see it yeah telegraphed. i think if he would just write a comic he would yes. make a really cool comic but yes. instead he's like no, I'm. I want. I want this to be a movie, so I'm going to kind of yeah. storyboard it. Mm. And uh, I feel like before ever, before he writes anything, he says, "Hey, watch this," and then it's just yeah. sort of like <laughs> the biggest spectacle, the most extreme thing he can think of. Um, and there are exceptions. I, I've liked a, a few of his books, but uh, in general, uh, I read a little bit of Kick Ass and. I, I do mean, like it's the extreme, genre. I like it's the genre made of art. Violent. I don't like the story. Yeah. It's surprisingly violent. When I read it, I was like, "Wow, this yeah. is graphic!" Holy crap! Yeah, it's, <laughs> and, and I feel like that's what it was trying to do yeah, more than yeah, the yeah. story. Yeah, which is that's what I kind of uh, enjoyed that. But I can see, I see your point. Like, it gets old if you keep doing that over and over again. But the movie, um, there's a there's a section in there that is drawn by uh, John Romita. 
Right, the animated and, section was like yeah, an animated and that's section? the that's really but besides the Nicolas Cage character in general because Nicolas Cage is just freaking hilarious. Yeah, um, like that that was the part of the movie I enjoyed more yeah. than anything else. Uh, yeah. Just for the for the Romita artwork, it was just it was beautiful. Neat. All right. Well, we are going to get on to. It's sketchy with John Ramita Jr. I <laughs> forgot to download a sound effect for this. <laughs> Put in mode. Don't you guys? Here's got another good. Uh, wait, what do you what do you need? I don't know. <laughs> Just some. Wait, it's sketchy with John Ramita Jr. Uh, I, I, I a little know. something there. All right, you're fine. I'll put something in there. No. I do want to look. If you want another great book to check out by him, yeah, uh, it's called Daredevil Man of Fear. Okay. Uh, that uh, I think uh, Frank Miller wrote it. John Romita. It's a like a four issue limited series. They based a lot of the Netflix series off of this. Mm -hmm. And this is where this is one of the books that change start. You start to notice Romita's style was changing from the Marvel House style to what his. It's kind of a blocky style that's very kind of reminiscent of Frank Miller because on that book he worked with Frank Miller, Klaus Jansen, who is Frank Miller's inker, inked. Ramita, oh, and yeah. you kind of saw the styles kind of mesh. So, uh, you know, Ramita now, he has this great, it's a very, it's just very boxy, gritty, square heads. Uh, but he picked up a lot of stuff from like Frank miller -y, a little bit drawing, uh, only with better uh, craftsmanship because Frank just draws crazy cartoony now. And I don't know what Frank happened. is, uh, Frank is Frank. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I, I never put that, that Klaus Jensen as the... Uh, as the connecting rod between them that's really interesting that's really I, I feel like where his his uh his style started to become even more stylistic like more ramita styley uh, it's, it's almost like that book, pushed man. him to experiment a little bit yes. more yeah i mean he's been doing it for so long you know you got you got to switch it up but uh it's it's so it's so contemporary like his look now and i love how he draws spider-man i love how he draws everything like he's drawn uh, he draws punisher great he's drawn everybody awesome Okay, well, we're going to get a little bit into uh, John Romita Jr. and who he is and the man behind him. Insert something here because I don't have the sound effect. I wasn't thinking ahead, of course, but that's okay. I'll fix it and it'll all be good. So, John Romita Jr.'s first contribution to Marvel Comics was at age 13. We were talking about that. Um, he created The Prowler and The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, he also began his career in Marvel UK, so over in the UK, doing sketch sketch covers uh, of reprints as favors and thanks to his respectful father. Um, he also began his run with, and this is where I'm getting like all over the place. I started yeah. reading all this stuff from Wiki, you know. Uh, he began his run on Iron Man uh, with writer David Michelini and artist Bob Layton, which began in 1978. The creative team introduced several supporting characters, including Stark's bodyguard, uh, girlfriend Bethany Cabe, and rival industrialist Justin Hammer. Oh. In the early 80s, he had his first regular run on the series The Amazing Spider-Man, which I'm sure you know, yeah. and also was the artist for the launch of the Dazzler series. Mm. You don't know what that is, but you might. Dazzler uh, is a total 70s. Uh, she's a mutant, and she like shoots light out of her hand. She's very uh, 70s. Like jazz hands? She's like, a disco. Yeah, no, it's a disco <laughs> mutant. Jazz hands. <laughs> it's like Studio 54 X-Men, like totally and unapologetically. Oh, my God. It's hilarious. Oh, uh, um, the 70s were crazy even in comics. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. Um, like from the eight, from 88 to 1990, Romita had an extended sit on or stint on Daredevil with writer Anne Nocenti and yeah. inker Al Williamson, which included the creation of the long running Daredevil nemesis, Typhoid Mary. Yeah. He invented Typhoid Mary too, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, and Typhoid Mary invented herself cause she kind of, you know, bubonic plague and all that. Yeah. Good yeah. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so for, from, from for Romita himself, his stint on Daredevil was the most significant for him being both the first time um, he was allowed to do full pencils instead of just breakdowns. So that's kind of cool. And the first time he had a working relationship with the writer on the series. He later remarked that he finally felt like he was part of the creation process for the first time when he was on Daredevil. So maybe he's really kind of getting his feet wet here. Like this is where he's starting to become uh, Romita Jr., yeah, I mean, you, as you opposed your, to you, you know, daddy's that. son. Yeah, kind of I was always thinking about like how does he step out of his father's shadow? Yeah, 
and you got to pay your dues a lot in comics, which is a lot of doing these uh, British imports and licensing work and, and, and just filling in, finishing other people's work uh, and, and then earning your own, you know, your, you can plot it and write it and really have control. So he paid his dues up until now, and now he gets to, like, do his own stuff. Well, then as he's working through the 90s, he worked on a host of Marvel stuff. Um, he returned to Iron Man for the second Armor Wars story arc written by John Byrne and the Punisher War Zone, the Cable minis uh, miniseries, and then the Punisher Batman crossover. So now we're kind of getting into all of that, I would think. So in 2008, Romita again returned to the Amazing Spider-Man. And is that when you said you kind of went back to yes, it? Yes, yes. It was this right is, here. Yeah. yeah, was that. Okay, that so that right makes sense. Yep. So he also collaborated with Miller during this time for a creator-owned series called... Ladies, kick ass, yeah. published by Marvel's Icon Imprint. This was later adapted in the 2010 film Kick Ass. Uh, Romita, one of the producers, directed an animated flashback sequence in the film. I, I find that really interesting that he was like, you know, all a part of that. And like, he's got two movie creds on his thing, right? He's got like uh, Kick Ass, and there was another one he's got on there um, that he did. Kick Ass, too. Yeah. I mean, if you, I'm surprised that the <laughs> Hollywood does not. <laughs> Tap more comic book artists because what they're doing is they're storyboarding, they're telling the story. They are the director, the camera guy, the lighting guy. Like right. this, these are the people you want. Instead, they take the superhero property and they give it to people who don't know how comic books work. Like you, well, you should be tapping these guys. They've already there's decades of great stories. All right. the storyboards are there. Get these guys to work on on the the, the motion pictures for you. Right. Absolutely. And then back in 2012, he set out to break his own record. Now, check this out. So back in 2011, there was this um, uh, thing for the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, yeah, this is good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So Romita was one of the 62 comics and creators who appeared at the ING stage at the Kapow Convention in London to set two Guinness World Records. One for the fastest production of a comic book, which is awesome. Yeah. So these guys made a comic book. Yes. Right there. Boom. And then second was the most contributors to a comic book. With the Guinness officials on hand to monitor their progress, writer Miller began the work at 9 a.m., scripting a 20-page black and white comic book of his character Superior, with Romita and the other artists appearing on stage throughout the day to work on the pencils, inks, lettering, each drawing, and each panel. The book was completed in 11 hours, 19 wow. minutes, and 38 Insane. seconds. That's awesome. And was published through Icon on November 23rd, 2011, with all the royalties being donated, which is fabulous, to the York Hill Children's Foundation. So then, yeah, yeah. but on top of that, so yeah. Romita then, I think he got the Guinness bug. So, and he also got the charity bug. So he set out to break his own record for continuous cartooning to yeah. support a charity called Can Candle Lighters Childhood Cancer Foundation in Nevada. And he attempted, he attempted, unfortunately didn't make it, but he attempted to continuously sketch characters and sign comics for 50 hours wow. straight. Wow. Yeah, he's very charitable too. They, uh, you know, he's been doing a lot of work with charities, with his, which is great. I always wanted to do. There's another exercise that we, an art school, we had thrown around. It was the 24-hour comic book. Mm -hmm. We want, we were, we wanted everyone to take 24 hours and write, draw a comic book from start to finish. But for him to do that in 11 hours with a right. team is uh, that's really cool. That was exciting. Well, it's it's a Mark Millar comic, so well, yeah, it's, it's all mostly, just uh, it's mostly tits and explosions. Yeah. It's so. all just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds like my high school years. Anyway, ah. so he, his influences and techniques, um, which this kind of interests me too, because I've heard a lot about Jack Kirby and I've heard his name and I'm so, I feel always so dumb, like finding like things out later. I didn't look him up or anything, but I put him on our Kirby list. Kirby is like, God. I know yeah, that. He started all Kirby. this shit. I know he did. And yeah. I was like, I'm not looking it up. I'm not doing it yet. Cause I like my initial reaction, but I'm like, oh my God, Jack Kirby. It's like knowing the name Stan Lee. And I'm like, yeah. I know it, but I don't know it. So I'm yeah. like. All right, that's a whole different thing another day. But his uh, influences are Jack Kirby and John Buscema, uh, mm. the Wyliffe family of painters and illustrator Charles Dana Gibson. So we will explore all of those. Did you later. say, was that the Wy Wyeth? The Wyeth family? Wyeth the Wyeth family. Yeah, yeah those are uh, American American illustrators, and they would paint. Uh, he, but the, Andrew Wyeth is an amazing painter, just mm -hmm. paint landscapes and barns and, and stuff. So it's interesting that he... Uh, he was looking at that as well as uh, graphic uh, illustration. 
Yeah, it's very cool. So, Phil, we are getting closer to the end here. What have you been drawing all day here? What have you been I doing? have been drawing uh, the bastard stepbrother of Kick-Ass, and that is Slapface. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, <laughs> he's got giant hands on those stupid batons. So <laughs> that's a good <laughs> slap you. Yeah, he's got the costume on. I love that. Oh, I love your sense of humor, Phil. And Imran, what are you drawing? Well, I was drawing in anticipation and celebration of the Logan movie coming out this week. Hugh Jackman's ninth and possibly final time playing Wolverine in an R-rated, sweary, violent uh uh, it's gonna be awesome, right? Uh, I, mean, just hit the right. I, uh, now, I drew my I drew Wolverine. Now, how is John Romita involved with Wolverine? Uh, he's, dra that? he's he's drawn Wolverine, yeah, uh, in in some way, shape, or form. Uh, he's done a couple of Romita has drawn he's drawn everybody. He's really drawn. Say, I'd be very surprised if he's not drawn X Men at some point in his career. Yeah. He's uh, drawn yeah. almost every Marvel uh, hero, every main one, and a lot of DC ones. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's his style now is awesome, and uh, I can't wait to see Logan. Awesome. Well, you will be able to catch all of those pictures on our Facebook page. Thank you guys for watching or listening to Sketching Comedy on YouTube and following along on your favorite podcatcher with our fellow artists, Phil Root and Imran Javed. Su subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com over at Blazing Caribou and watch us uh, live every Wednesday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Uh, sometimes we do a little bit of pre-show, so you can always check us out a little bit earlier. Like and subscribe to us on our Facebook page or Twitter at Sketching Comedy. Next week, we get to talk about Scotty Young. And yeah. hopefully yeah. Bill won't salivate all the way because it is one of his... <laughs> <laughs> favorite artist and actually i do know this artist and he is actually one of mine so it's all good um he's an american comic book artist children's book illustrator and writer he's best known for his work with various marvel comic characters his comic book ab adaptations of l frank Baum's oz books with eric shannonauer and a series of novels with neil gaiman and with that ladies and gentlemen our show comes to a draw I've been your host, Carrie Sims, along with Phil and Imran. We'll sketch you guys later next week on Sketching Comedy. You've been listening to a Blazing production. Support and subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Blazing Caribou Studios. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo! Though, but that's good. I have to fix. I keep forgetting to do a, a sound effect for the the other part. <laughs> I'll get it. I figure we'll by the time. Post. Pardon? Yeah, I'll fix that shit and post. It's fine. But I figure by the time we get to the fourth or fifth one, it'll be good. So I'm getting there. Right, I, I got the news. I, guess <laughs> I need to set up a sound. My all my fucking sound shit for this other thing. Now. Yeah, you okay. should. Like, if you've got other stuff that you want to play during, the, I don't care. You know yeah. me. I'm yeah, gonna... no, I'll have that, but I'm going to, I got to, I, I was going to use my, I just got to load the sounds for Trivia Geeks and another thing so that it's always there. Okay. I'll have both, uh, but I have to re-fucking set up all the shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to stop the broadcast. Thank okay. you, who uh, viewers in the uh, chat room. Appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, I will start.